I lived with my mother in an apartment building, in a large city. I used to go with my mom to her work and I watched as she gave martial arts and self-defense lessons to people. Whenever I could, I participated, but only a little, as I was very young. But it was mostly very boring for me. After her work, my mom homeschooled me, giving special attention to what I needed to know about the human society I was in. But I was feeling very lonely, and I wanted to play and meet other kids my age, so I asked my mom to sign me up in a local school. She didn't want to sign me up, I almost had to beg her. She told me some strict rules, I had to follow, and always. For example, I could never ever leave the school without her, and I could never ever tell anyone, that I was not human and that I had come off a starship. So as the weeks turned into months at school, I felt I had adapted well so I started to feel comfortable there, perhaps too comfortable, as I started to talk too much, and too openly, because I started to tell everyone, alternative stories that differed a lot with the officially accepted ones, and just about any subject. This caused my teachers to see me as a problem child and I was not only sent to the principal's office many times with my mom having to attend those meetings as well, but I ended up with my school ordering my mom to take me to see a psychologist. I was not being naughty, I genuinely did not know what to say and what not to. Remember I was only eight years old. My two realities blended, and I literally didn't know where one ended and the other began. When a kid was telling everyone that his dad had such and such fancy car, I responded that my mother had a spaceship. And I was greeted with laughs and, she does not, remarks from everyone. And another time, I innocently asked another kid what kind of spaceship her mother had. This happened to me, each time, more and more often, and not only about spaceships, but with every single subject of talk and study. I just couldn't understand how people could believe such obvious lies in the news and all the falsity that is talked about in public schools. And, of course, I was started to be left isolated by my friends and teachers, as they saw me as a crazy weird girl. As it was to be expected, my mother changed my school for another, several times but I clearly felt that I could not fit in anywhere. Some of my friends tolerated me, as long as I didn't start to talk about strange things, but those were in a minority. But one of the things that called out my attention the most, is that they didn't, or don't even care to listen to alternative ideas, or ways to see one or another subject. And they certainly didn't care if I was telling the truth or not about me coming from another planet. Although technically, I was born in a ship in deep space. I noticed how contained their minds are within a very narrow reality corridor. Still thinking that humanity is at the top of all evolution, whatever that is, and the center of the universe. Completely ignoring all what is going on right outside their planet including the several hundred park starships in Earth's orbit, and blindly obeying and believing all what their authorities tell them, or should I say, captors. When a ship and her crew, of any human-looking Lyrian race, has been orbiting and operating around and on Earth, they soon realize that it's easier to get, at least most, of their essentials directly from Earth not having to depend as much on their supply ships, from their home planets. Each race will have its unique way to do things, logically, but much like what my mother used to do, what I've seen to be the most common way to go down to Earth to get supplies, is that the extraterrestrial group will have one or more human vehicles, cars, or SUVs, and the most competent of their group, will drive them down to Earth using a ramp-equipped starship. Most medium ones, have ramps anyway. These human vehicles, 
at least most of the time, are legally and correctly registered and are able to circulate with normality, having genuine license plates. And the capable non-humans, will also have legally obtained driver's licenses, as they hold human identities, as I described in the previous video. These would be the ones who will obtain the resources for the rest of their group, who remain safely on board their spacecraft. Once there, they simply drive them into a shopping mall, where they purchase whatever they need, in a normal way, although I've gotten word that it is also quite common, that the non-human group will openly steal whatever they need. Later leaving a disproportionately large monetary compensation in return, at least sometimes. How they get their money, is a complicated subject, until recently they used to obtain all the amount they needed, by hacking banking systems and ATMs using their much more advanced computers. The problem nowadays, is that human banking computers, and their safety systems have evolved to a point, where this hacking is no longer possible, or at least easy. But most of the human-looking extraterrestrials that live on Earth for long periods of time end up developing survival skills that enable them to earn money in a normal way, just as most humans do. All this above means that as the years go by and a starship crew remains near Earth, or in Earth's orbit, their ship will progressively start to get filled up with all kinds of things of human manufacture. And this is yet another mechanism where human society is influencing other cultures and their expeditionary crews.